everybody! Welcome to a weekly wrap-up wherein I tell you about the stuff that I read this past week. It is Easter Sunday as I'm filming this, so hope you had a good weekend or a good Easter if you celebrate Easter. Uh, my weekend has been very... It's been very glum outside. I don't know. I wish it was sunny. <laughs> as you can probably tell, the lighting is very, um, it makes me look very pale. Uh, but books that I read this past week. The novella that I read, which I'm counting towards my Goodreads goal because it was more than 100 pages long and I enjoyed it so much, was um, Every Heart a Dory by Shana McGuire. This is one of the Tor.com novellas that's coming out on April 5th. Um, I have done a written review of this and I'm also going to be doing a video review, so I'm not going to say any more than that, but I gave this one five stars. I loved it. I really connected to the, the, the story and the message in it, so look forward to that. The first novel that I read this week was Carry On by Rainbow Rowell. This is nominated in the YA novel category for the Booktube SFF Awards, which is why I'm reading it now rather than later. I wanted to read it anyway, but impetus. When comparing it to the other book in the YA category, Illuminate, I will definitely be voting for Carry On because I think it was better written. It didn't have some of the weaknesses, especially like in plot and stuff that Illuminate did. I think that Raoul just is a strong storyteller and I really like what she was just doing with the fact that this is very much a fan fiction-y story. It seems to really be in conversation with the fan fiction community and like Harry Potter fan fiction. But while I appreciate what it's doing with the book as a whole and that it exists in the context of fangirl as well, it's very complex. I don't have any experience with fan fiction. I have never read fan fiction. I've never been really heavily involved in the Harry Potter fandom either. So I feel like I'm really missing everything this book is really having a dialogue with and why a lot of people have so much to say about it. I'm, I'm really missing the context there. On its own, I think the book was okay. Um, I'm not going to recap the plot, by the way, because it's, it's been quite popular. Everyone knows about this, but, you know, it takes a lot of the chosen one tropes and archetypes and stuff from, like, Harry Potter and twists it and turns it on its head a little bit. I really liked how the story was set up. I liked the idea of just being plonked down like these kids last year at a magical school when they've already had all these adventures that are alluded to and they're just trying to get through one more year and then it's the final showdown. I like starting so late in the story and just getting to the final point. I don't know, something is really holding me back with loving this book and I think it's that it's YA, and there are some elements of it that are very YA, especially the... not just the characters' ages, that's probably a big thing, but the romance between... not the romance, that very, um, conflicted relationship between Simon Snow and Baz, and how it's portrayed. Like, I, I actually kind of dig the whole Harry Potter, Draco Malfoy actually got together type of vibe. Sometimes I would just be taken right out of the story, just yanked out of the story because there would be a particular scene where I was like, that feels like fan service. That just feels like blatantly putting on the page something that your teen audience wants to see, like two teenage boys snogging each other. Uh, and I, I didn't like that so much. I'm not a fan of Rainbow Rowell's writing style. I DNF'd Eleanor and Park years ago because I just, I'm like, I'm just waiting for this to break out into free verse. And I didn't feel quite that strongly about Carry On, but there were moments where I would just stop reading and look at something on the page and go, she's really writing with her own style. Okay, moving on. I think I might end up giving this three stars because despite what all I've just said, I do think it was quite clever in parts, though maybe not as clever as I think some people have made it out to be. And I always wanted to get back to the store. Like, I would put this book down and I'd be just waiting until I could pick it up and read another 50 pages. I wanted to see where the story was going. That is a good thing to say about a book when it captures your attention that much. So it was good, but uh, I guess my plan of maybe reading more Rainbow Rowell's stuff like Fangirl, it's not gonna happen. Then I listened to the audiobook of I'm a Stranger Here Myself by Bill Bryson. This is kind of a travelogue memoir complaining about America book. <laughs> um, it's actually a collection of weekly columns that he wrote for a British newspaper back in the 90s after he moved back to America after 20 years of living in Britain. And it's a lot of commentary and tidbits about American culture and the way that we behave and the way that stuff is set up. Like, oh my god, all the cars and fast food and stuff like that. And it's really dated. Some things are true. Like, some things still exist today. There are still a lot of cars out there. But... <laughs> 
this certain things like about technology and like politics or whatever, you can really tell this book is like 20 years old now. I thought it was okay. It didn't annoy me nearly as much as uh, Notes from a Small Island, which I listened to the week before last. Bryson, as a person, really gets on my nerves. In these particular books where he's writing about travel and his uh, commentary on things that he notices in society, it really comes clear to me that I don't like Bryson as a person because he complains about everything, and I have coined the phrase, he's a curmudgeonly douche waffle. He's a curmudgeon, and he's kind of a douche at the same time to people. Like, he's not really... He's not nice to people. Like, I think some people say that he just has these gentle jabs at, at people like Americans or whatever. Like, no, I actually think that he's quite unkind and unfair, especially because his stories are definitely exaggerated for an effect. He's a really good writer. That's the thing that always gets me is he knows how to use the English language. He loves the English language. He uses it well, but I don't think his work is nearly as interesting, original, or good, or cutting, or scathing, or even benign as people seem to think it is. The kicker is that I have really enjoyed other books by Bryson. Like, I loved Mother Tongue as a kid. I've read At Home. I thought that was pretty decent. His book on Shakespeare, also pretty decent. And maybe it's particularly his books like this one, the travel commentary ones that I don't like. They might be a little bit older and his style has evolved since then. I'm taking a break from Bryson. I thought I was going to listen to another one or two of his audiobooks and he's just irritating me so much that I'm going to stop. The final thing that I read this week was Kingfisher by Patricia McKillop. I really did enjoy this book. I thought it was a little bit weak in the story because there were so many, like three or four plot lines in quite a short book. Um, it felt a little thin in places. The beginning was good, the ending was exactly what I expected and what I wanted, but the middle part, there could have been more. There just could have been a ton more. Um, McKillop doesn't write like a humongous world building or really complex magic system. She doesn't explain things. She usually just presents a world that seems familiar, like in this case, a modern day Arthurian quest court type of thing. You know what's going on. You know that the magic is that kind of thing that comes from fairies or whatever. You don't need to have it explained to you. The story itself is about what the characters do when faced with mystical, magical powers and magical artifacts. They don't have to understand how everything works in minute detail to get through the motions of the quest story. So. I really did enjoy it. I'm not going to talk about it too much because I just wrote a review about it and I'm feeling a little tired of trying to explain everything in it, so I will link my review for this. I don't think any of that made sense. That was like stream of consciousness babbling and I can't remember anything that I just said, so I'm going to be banging my head against a keyboard trying to edit this later. I, I'm, having a, I'm having a morning, guys. <laughs> Well, that is what I read. If you've read any of these or you want to, please leave me your thoughts down below in the comments. I uh, hope you had a wonderful weekend and you have a good week. Happy reading. I will talk to you again soon. Bye.